Si se puede, compañeros! Cheers and celebration from fast food workers as they attended the state's first fast food council meeting since California's $20 fast food minimum wage took effect in April. Today's agenda. And More than three dozen workers came to the Sacramento meeting, many of whom wearing purple SEIU labor union shirts. Among them, Romualda Alcazar Cruz, an employee at a Wendy's franchise in Oakland. Sí fue un impacto bueno. She spoke to us in Spanish about how the $20 fast food minimum wage has improved her financial situation. Pues ha sido muy bueno. It's been really good because I can now put more food on the table and in my fridge and pay my rent on time, which was always a challenge. But on the flip side, for franchisee Teg Virtor, it's been tough. He owns and operates an Arby's restaurant in Northern California. I have been forced to raise prices. I try to do the best I can. I have taken money out of our own savings to make things work this last quarter. But I do not know how long I will be able to sustain something like that moving forward. But four months after the fast food minimum wage law took effect, there's still confusion on who's exempt from it. While fast food restaurants in airports, museums, hotels, theme parks, gambling establishments, and event centers are exempt, the law says nothing about ice cream parlors. Gabriela Campbell, who owns a Handel's homemade ice cream franchise in San Diego, came to the meeting to make clear she received written messages from legislative staff who told her businesses that make and sell only ice cream were never meant to be included in the law. Still, in the end, nobody from state government ever gave her a final clear answer one way or the other. We've gotten the runaround from one agency to the next to the next, which led us here today to convey to the Fast Food Council to please take into consideration that uh, ice cream parlors were not the legislative intent of the bill. When asked about the issue, the Fast Food Council's attorney said it most likely will need to be clarified in the legislature itself. Still, the council's chairperson is vowing to get to the bottom of it. These small business owners, they're seeking clarity. And so I am going to, as in my position as chair, dive into that. And the meeting that took place here primarily focused on listening to industry stakeholders but did not result in formal action. The Fast Food Council will next meet in September to determine who to hire as its full-time executive officer. Reporting in Sacramento, covering local news that matters, Aton Wallace, Fox 40 News.